Hello and welcome to another video. I've got the integral of cosecant x, which we can also write as 1 over sine x. But what I have observed is if you check in different textbooks, you get different answers. Even if you use an app, you type it into a website, you even try to do it yourself, your answer will be different from many other answers you get. And that could leave you confused a little. But what I want you to remember is that this is a trig expression. And you know, in trig, there's something we call identities. There's a way you can write something, you can write in multiple ways. You can see even writing the problem itself, you can write it this way, or you can write it this way. And that's why the answers are different. So it's important that you know what you're doing, that you're correct. Now, if it's a multiple choice problem and what you have is different from the options, you might just have to try and find some identity manipulations to change the trig expression you have to look like what you're supposed to get. So what I'm going to do now is use my method and integrate this expression. And after integrating it, I'm going to write out all the possible options I've seen on the internet and in textbooks and how you can transform whatever you have to what you're looking for if it's multiple choice. Otherwise, what you have is correct, if you're correct. So what I'm going to do now is solve it. I'm going to find the integral of 1 over sine x using my method. I'm going to use u substitution actually because it always, almost always works. Okay, in this case it works because what I'm going to do, I'm going to say that the integral of 1 over sine x dx is the integral of sine x over sine squared x dx. I have not changed anything. What I just did is provide myself with an opportunity to create a function down here. Okay, that's if I differentiate this, it's going to give me this. I know this is not going to give me, but I'm going to change this to 1 minus cosine squared x. Okay, and how did I move from here to here? I just multiplied the top and bottom by sine x. Okay, so any kind of manipulation you could do will work as long as it works eventually. Okay, so here, what I'm going to have is um, this is now equal to the integral of sine x over 1 minus cosine squared x dx. Okay, so I know that sine squared x is 1 minus cosine squared x. That is the Pythagorean identity. Okay, and from here I can say let u be equal to cosine x. Because if u is cosine x, I know that the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. And now I have something to work with. Okay, so I'm going to have this and I say that du equals negative sine x dx. Okay, which implies that negative du equals sine x dx. And you see, I got sine x dx here. So I can say this expression, the integral of 1 over sine x dx is equal to, if I go here and I replace sine x dx with negative du, I'm going to have the integral. I have negative du here. That's multiplied by. And then I have um, 1 over 1 minus cosine squared. And I said u is cosine x, so that's 1 minus u squared. So this is going to resolve into this negative comes here. This is negative integral of 1 over. This is difference of two squares. That's going to be 1 minus u times 1 plus u du. Okay. See, I'm almost done. Now, how do you solve, how do you take the integral of an expression like this? Because the denominator can be factored, you use integration by parts. No, not integration by parts. 
uh, partial fraction decomposition. Okay, if you, I, I'll put the link in the description for other videos where you use partial fraction decomposition. If you have a rational function where the denominator can be factored into linear expressions, because now this is easier. So I know that when I use partial fraction decomposition, what I'm gonna get from this is basically, I'm gonna retain the minus sign. So this is equal to minus um, the integral of, this is gonna be one half, so it's gonna be one half over one minus u, and then plus one half over one plus u. Okay, and that's it, du. So this expression can be broken down into this. And if you try it out, if you try to solve this, say this is just algebra two, and you're trying to put these two together, you'll notice that you end up getting just this, okay? Um, basically that. Now, with what we've got, okay? With what we have here, what we can do now is say, mm, okay, I can break this down into two integrals, okay? So, this is equal to, I'm still gonna leave the negative, I'm going to take out the one half, so you have one half, or you can actually factor out the one half all the way, and then what you have will be the integral of one over one minus u um, du plus the integral of um, one over one plus u du. What do you notice? If you take this integral, it's going to be negative natural log of one minus u. They take this integral, it's gonna be um, just natural log of one plus u. So here, what we have is gonna be equal to, let's keep going, negative one half multiplied by negative natural log of one minus u. And here we're gonna have plus just the natural log of one plus u. Okay, and this negative can come back and redistribute here so that our final answer is gonna be negative. Okay, we bring in the negative, so we'll just have one half, and this negative becomes a positive. We have natural log of one minus u, and this negative changes this to a negative. We have natural log of one plus u. Okay, and this typically is O plus C. Hey, we gotta do plus C right here, plus C plus c. So the first answer that we're going to get, remember we said u is cosine x. So the first answer will be one half, one half of, oh this one half applies to both of them. So I have to say one half of the natural log of one minus cosine x. Okay, so um, and then you have minus the natural log of 1 plus cosine x plus c. So this is one way to write this answer, but this looks a little bit too long or messy or somehow. So what we're going to do is use the law of logarithms and combine this and this. Remember that this law exists, that ln of a minus ln of b equals the natural log of a over b. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to combine both of them and put this over this. So you can actually write this as one half of the natural log of one minus cosine x over one plus cosine x plus c. That is one answer that you can get. Okay, so every answer, all the possible answers we can get come from this answer. The manipulation of this will lead you to whatever you want. But let me just tell you one that's very, very obvious. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move this one half here. Remember for natural log, when you move the one half there, this becomes a square root sign. So this is equal, let me go. So this is equal to the natural log of, see this one half becomes a square root over this expression. So we're gonna have the square root of one minus cosine x over one plus 
cosine x, right? Plus c. This from your trig identities is the tangent, the half angle formula for tangent. If you remember this, so this exactly gives you the natural log of tan x over 2 plus c. So this could actually be, uh, this is parenthesis, so this is another answer you could get for this. So let me box this. This is an answer. This one is another answer <laughs> like that. So those are two possible answers just from trig manipulation. Remember what's most important is that you can do this yourself or remember one of the things that the textbook says, multiply the top and bottom by something and then you get something. That's a faster way, but I know I will not remember. So that's why I just do my way, which always works for anything that looks like a fraction. Okay, so um, what other manipulation? Well, we know that tangent is sine over cosine. So from here, you could actually say that this is equal to the natural log of sine x over 2 divided by cosine x over 2 plus c which you can write in a nicer way. So I just rewrote this to look like this, which could be the same thing as the natural log of sine x over two minus the natural log of cosine x over two plus c. This looks like something you might remember easily. You see this? See that? This is easy. This is the shortest. This looks more familiar. So you might memorize this. So sometimes if you think that you may forget, just memorize one of them and then use your trig identities to manipulate them. Uh, what else can we do? Well, I got this. I got this. I have this. But this is not what you see in most textbooks. None of these shows up in textbooks. What shows up in textbooks contains cosecant and cotangent. Okay? Why don't we check that out? What can we do? Let's go back here. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to try and do some, let's underline this. So I'm going to do some manipulation of just this expression. So let's just work on this. See, 1 minus cosine x over 1 plus cosine x. I can transform this so that I can get a, a Pythagorean identity either under or on top. You just choose which one. So let's say I want to get a Pythagorean identity under. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top by 1 minus cosine x. Multiply this also by 1 minus cosine x. So nothing has changed. Now watch what happens. If you multiply this by this, what you end up getting is 1 minus cosine x squared. If you multiply this by this, you're going to get 1 minus cosine squared x. That's the difference, because this is um, the difference of two squares, and that's what you've got. But we know that 1 minus cosine squared x is sine squared x. So this expression is 1 minus cosine x squared divided by sine squared x. Okay, now let's go back to this expression. Remember how we brought the square root sign here. So we're still under here, okay? What we have here is still exactly what you have here, but now when you bring in the square root sign from behind the natural log function, you take the square root of this and the square root of this. So watch this. So if we say, um, what is the, the square root? So the natural log of the square root of one minus cosine squared x over sine squared x is just gonna be the natural log of one minus cosine x, sorry, one minus cosine x squared over sine x. So you take the square root of the top and the bottom and this is what you have. Now, what does this mean? Well, this is the same thing as the natural log of one over sine x minus cosine x over sine x. I am sure you've seen this in textbooks because one over sine x is cosecant x 
So this is the natural log of cosecant x minus cotangent x. And this is the most common one you see in textbooks. You can see how you can go from whatever you have to get this. Okay, now, now there's another version of it which just has the minus sign. So it's gonna be, um, it has a minus sign. How do we get the minus sign of the natural log? I'm just looking for a way. I'm looking for a way. Okay, so what can we do if there is, we want to flip it. How can we change the sign to make it a plus? Because some functions actually have this to be a plus. Okay, what can we do so that this becomes a plus? What I'm going to do is, instead of creating the, creating the uh, Pythagorean identity in the denominator, I'm just going to create it on top. So instead of multiplying by 1 minus cosine x, I'm going to multiply by 1 plus cosine x so that the Pythagorean identity is on top and not under, and then I flip it, and then I put a minus sign, and that's what happens. Maybe I should leave that as an exercise for you, because, okay, I'm just going to show it, but I'm not going to write it. At the end of the day, our answer is going to be ne a negative sign of the natural log of this same expression, but with this co uh, uh, a positive, cosecant x plus cotangent x. Okay, plus C. Okay, let's put a C here. Go, go away from here. Plus C. I leave this as an exercise for you to do, but you can see that it is possible for you to get any of the various formulas that you get. How many did we get here? This is one, this is two. Um, you can write it this way, three, this is four, this is another one, five. Let's say you forgot. Um, this is 6, this is 7, I'm sure there's a, there are other ways you can write it. So the answers are very different in terms of appear, appearance, but in terms of value, they are the same thing. It's just trig identities that are used, or whatever method you use to find the integral um, might lead you to something that looks different, but they still have the same value. Okay, I hope you've learned something in this video. When you're dealing with trig integrals, you are not guaranteed to get the same answer at the end. They don't look the same, but they are the same. Just do some trig manipulations and you'll be fine. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.